High in the Western Himalayas, cradled in the Karakuram Mountains of northern Pakistan, lies a plateau known as the Land of Giants. The Diosai Plateau in Gilgit Baltistan is the second highest plateau in the world. The Diosai National Park is home to the endangered Himalayan brown bear. An estimated 45 to 50 bears live in these rugged plains. When the Diosai National Park was created in 1993, it was divided into zones to allow for the shared use of resources between wildlife and people. There are many settlements in the valleys below the Diosai National Park. In the villages of Karmang, Montoka, Dapa, Shilla and Sadpara, the local people live a life of extreme hardship. In the past, development projects have been hard to come by in Gilgit, Baltistan, and little has changed here in the last 100 years. हमारा यहां जो है सर्दियों में बहुत बड़ा मुश्किलात है अक्टूबर में बर्फबारी शुरू हो जाती है माल मवेशी को पालना बहुत बड़ा मुश्किल है सर्दियों में यहां उनको चारे में ले जाने के तो बहुत बड़ा हुआ है बर्फबारी की वजह से नहीं वहां नहीं पहुंचते हैं और गाह जो है हम लोग जो है तकरीबन मनों के हिसाब से बहुत बड़े-बड़े टाल लगा के जमा कर लेते हैं तकरीबन हमारा इस घास को जमा करने के लिए जानवरों के घास जमा पूजी के लिए हमारे लिए कम से कम जो है ये अप्रैल मई से लेकर आगे अक्टूबर तक जो है ये जितने महीने होता है उसमें जो हमारा पूरा वक्त उसी में लग जाता है इनको घास जमा करने के लिए द समर ब्रिंग्स लिटिल रेस्पाइट इन दीस फ्यू मंथ्स ऑल द टास्क्स दैट विल अलाउ द विलेजर्स टू एंजॉय द एक्सट्रीम बिटर कोल्ड ऑफ विंटर नीड टू बी कंप्लीटेड the valleys were once forested, but now the slopes are bare. Dung is the only source of fuel. The women spend long hours collecting and drying this. A backbreaking daily chore. The villagers rely heavily on their livestock to eke out a living. The men of the village have nowhere else to graze their livestock other than the lush meadows of the Diosai Plateau. When the park was created, they claimed traditional grazing rights, which had to be respected. In recent years, while the bear population has grown, so has the human population. Bears and livestock are competing for the grazing pastures and the habitat is being degraded. The presence of humans in the bear's habitat is a reality and local communities have to be integrated into conservation efforts. The Himalayan Wildlife Foundation, active caretakers of the park for the first 12 years of its existence, did just that. The growth of the brown bear population suggests that the strategy was very successful. When park rangers and staff are drawn from local communities, they take home a better understanding of the conservation issues. An awareness campaign to enlist the support of the local communities is also key. As the largest animal in the area, they are often blamed for most of the attacks on livestock but the Diosai bears are primarily vegetarians. A recent survey in and around the park showed that more livestock was being lost to disease than to predation. 
making the local people aware of the other, more common causes of the livestock deaths can help create a more tolerant attitude to their bear neighbours. Perhaps most valuable of all is planting the seed of awareness in young minds. After all, it is in the hands of these local children that the fate of the bears will one day rest. Finding other sources of income for the communities, such as fish farming or other commercial occupations that don't negatively impact the park, is also vital. Assistance from donor organisations in such initiatives is desperately needed in the valleys below the DOSI. Reducing their dependence on livestock will help protect the bear's habitat. Such programmes have been successful in other remote mountain communities. Fish farming was introduced in the Brogil Valley and a vaccination program in the Ayubia National Park. With initiatives like these, the lives of the local people could be greatly improved. This park is the sole habitat in the whole of South Asia that can claim an increasing population of brown bears. If the park habitat is to be protected, the local communities must be given a voice, a role in the conservation efforts and alternative means of livelihood. The future of the species in Pakistan and perhaps the region may depend on finding a solution to this challenge. Only then can the park and its biodiversity be protected so that future generations can enjoy this valuable part of our natural world.